Welcome to this Getting Started with Connector Designer video. Connector Designer is a code-free visual tool for creating and modifying simple searches against third-party data sources. Connector Designer is intended to be used by users with experience at working with REST services or SQL databases, giving the ability to set up connections and simple searches without needing coding skills. In this video, we will demonstrate how to create a simple connector in Connector Designer to connect to and search a REST data source. To begin with, we are viewing the Connector Designer Connections list. This displays all of the connectors available on the I2Analyze server to which it is connected. Those connections shown in grey are not managed through Connector Designer and cannot be opened or edited. Connectors with the lock symbol are currently being edited by another user. These connectors can be viewed but cannot be changed. Those shown as editing are currently being edited in this connector designer session. Selecting one of these will open the connector for further editing. We are going to create a new connector to show how to create and configure a connector from scratch. To begin with, we set the name of the connector and provide a description. Next, we need to choose a schema, and optionally a charting scheme. We can choose to use an existing schema that may already have been created either for I2Analyze or for another connector. Alternatively, if a new schema is required, the I2Analyze Schema Designer tool can be used to create one. For this example, we use an existing schema and charting scheme. To load both a schema and a charting scheme, use the Windows Multi-Select keys to select both files. Once loaded, we can see that the available entity types in purple, as well as the available link types in green. We next need to select the data source type, either REST or SQL. Note that the SQL option may be used with Microsoft SQL or Oracle databases. For this example, we will choose REST and then click Create. The process of creating a connector can take a short while. Once created, we need to add a data source. The data source configures how and what information to retrieve from the external data source. To start with, we provide a name for the data source and choose an authentication method. Most data sources will require a level of authentication to retrieve data from them. An API key is a simple token provided to clients for accessing a service. A bearer token is where the client is given a token to access the resource by an authentication mechanism, such as OpenAuth2 or Azure AD. Basic authentication requires the user to enter a username and password to access the resource. And finally, cookie authentication uses HTTP cookies to authenticate client requests. For the data source in this example, we'll authenticate using an API key. We click Add to begin creating this data source. Now that the data source exists, we can begin to define the endpoint which will provide the details on how to connect to and retrieve information from that data source. It should be noted that each connector may have multiple data sources as well as multiple endpoints within a data source. We will now start to create the endpoint by clicking Add Endpoint. Firstly, the endpoint is given a name, in this example, GetPersons. We will then provide the method that will be used to retrieve data from that data source. The Get and Post methods are available for REST data sources. For the example we are connecting to, we need to use Get. We then provide the URL of the data source to be accessed. The example REST endpoint we are connecting to will respond to the query parameter full name. We will provide a value so the connector designer can check the response from the data source and create appropriate attributes for the service mapping. Now that we have defined the request, we can run it to see the response from the REST endpoint. The response from the REST endpoint is that we have not provided an API key. We will add the API key and its value to the headers part of the request and then run the request again. Here we can see the response that has been returned, including the gender, date of birth and associated phones and addresses. Connect the Designer also supports the path parameter method of querying the endpoint, as well as supporting the body method for post endpoints. We can examine the response to be sure the results match our requirements. In this example, we should note that the format of the date which is returned in the day-month-year format. Note also that we can choose which elements of the response define the root object. 
This will control which properties are available to match in the service mapping. With addresses as the root object, only the address ID, street address and city will be available. For the search we are building, we need the entire root object. When we click Add, the endpoint is created and we can see the fields available from it. We will now need to create a service. The service provides the searches available to the user of the connector. We give the service a name, which ideally should be descriptive, so the user can determine the purpose of the search. In our example, find person by full name. A description may also be defined to help with this. The persistent record identifiers option should be checked if the service always gives the same identifier to the same record when returning results. This will prevent duplication when a record is added to the chart more than once. The data source we are using doesn't do this, so we will leave it unchecked. We now need to define the mapping between the schema items on the right and the endpoint fields on the left. We do this by dragging the item from the right, in this case the person entity, into the target area. We then drag and drop the corresponding properties on the left onto them. Here I match person ID with the identifier, full name with full name and gender with gender. Notice that on the left the source fields have been automatically assigned logical types during the creation of the endpoint. If they are not correct we can click on the logical type and change it. In this case, it has interpreted date of birth correctly, but we can see here the alternatives available. However, in this case, we need to transform the date format to match the schema, because the data source returns day, month, year, whereas our schema expects year, month, day. We can use a regular expression to perform that transformation. We can now map the date of birth field to the target date of birth. Now that this is configured, we need to configure the input, indicated by the exclamation mark. The input is what the user of the service needs to provide to use the search. In this screen, we define the type of information the user will provide. So for the full name, we expect a single line string. And for the XIPI key, we expect an authentication string. We will make both of these values mandatory, as the search cannot return results without these values being provided. We have now completed the definition of the service, so let's publish it to make it available to test. Publishing the connector will take a short while. Once published, we can click Test to see how the connector works. This will open the web client external search window. We locate the service we've just created, find person by full name, and open it. Note that we are prompted to enter the full name to search for. We will search for the infamous Gene Hendricks. Once the input full name is provided, we are then prompted for the API key required by the data source. Once complete, the search runs. We can see Gene in the results, along with his gender and date of birth. We can choose to add him to a new chart and then view his details in the record inspector. So, what have we done so far? We've created a connector and defined its data source and endpoint. We have mapped the source fields to the target properties in our schema. We have defined the inputs required by the user to run the search and then published and tested the resulting search service. When we were defining the first endpoint, we saw that related information was returned in the response. We will now look at how we might use that information to provide additional details for a search result. We return to the connector designer and reopen the connector we were working on. My REST connector. To make changes to an already published connector, we select Edit. We will add a new service to our connector. The purpose of this service is to return the associated data using a charted record from this data source as a seed entity. In traditional L2 terms, we would call this Expand. After clicking Add Services, we give the new service a name, Show Connected Records, for example. We can then start to map our target properties. The access to link will be used to provide a connection between the person and the returned phone. We then need to define the from and to entities for the link, in this case person and phone. Notice how each entity provides its properties for mapping. The mapping for the person entity on the link will be based on those used for the first service we set up. We can use the copy and paste tool to copy from one service to another. 
We then define the mapping for the phone entity. We can use the same source field for both the identifier and phone number as we assume that the phone number is unique. With the access to link defined, we repeat the exercises for the resides link, this time between person and address. We can use copy and paste to define the person and then map the address fields. Now we define the input for the service. In this example, the information will be obtained or derived from the chart. By selecting from chart selection, we tell the service to get information from the currently selected chart item and set which entity type it is valid against, in this case, person. We can set how many chart records can be selected on the chart to act as seats, either single or multiple. We now set the type for input. The full name parameter will be derived from the selected chart data, choosing the appropriate source fields. In our example, full name, gender and date of birth. For the API key, we identify it as authentication, like we did previously. We have now completed our second service for this connector, so we now publish it so it can be tested. Now that publication is complete, let's run our original search again. Remember that we need a seed entity to provide the input to our new search. This time let's look for Carol Smythe. She's returned and we can add her to the chart. We make sure she's selected and return to the external searches window. Note that our new search is available in the Available with Current Selections section. If we open it, we are prompted for our API key and then the search results are returned. Here we can see the address and phone details available from the data source for Carol Smythe. If we copy those to the existing chart, we can now see the associated addresses and phones linked to Carol. So what have we learnt now? We've set up a second search to use a charted item as a seed to perform a search which returns related items from the source response. We have seen how to map entities and their properties to link ends how to use the copy and paste functions to avoid setting field mappings twice, and how to configure where to get the seed information from for the search. We hope that this video has been helpful and that you can now make a start on creating your own connectors.